Hey guys, welcome. Today's practice is designed to give your lower body a little love. The idea with this one was that it could be great for post hike, bike, ski, whatever the activity is to work with both the joints and the soft tissue, creating space and stability in that way. If you have a blanket and a couple blocks, I would grab that. Also, a couple couch cushions would work well if you don't have those things for props for what we'll use them for. And we're gonna dive right in with the feet. So toe squat, <laughs> you'll come to tabletop, like you're coming to hands and knees, but then bring your knees together. Tuck your toes under. And here's one great place for a blanket or a couch cushion, well, throw a pillow, is that if you know your knees like a little bit more space, in deeper squats, you can snuggle something behind. Right, so toes tucked under, start to sit hips back towards heels. Right, and if you get here and you feel like you don't need the blanket, you can ditch that, set it to the side to see what feels like a good choice. And then from here, there's a few options. You can keep your hands down for support because sometimes you get just to here and you're like, uh-huh, that's good, I can already feel that. If you have blocks, you can come up just a little bit higher, bring your hands to blocks. Or if it feels okay, you can bring your hands to your thighs. One other little adjustment I think is nice to make here is just to make sure all the toes are tucked under. Sometimes if you have little pinkies, they tend to hang out to the sides. Okay, wherever you're at, hands down or hands to your thighs, just for a moment, close your eyes. And this one can bring up a fair amount of sensation in a lot of us. And so find the place that feels appropriate. I don't wanna to push too far, but it feels effective. And then just see if you can meet that sensation with your breath. So the breath starts to get just a little deeper, a little fuller. It doesn't have to be anything specific. We're gonna less work less with like a flowy practice today and get more into the therapeutic side of it. Good, see if you can give yourself a few more breaths. Right. Knowing <laughs> that when we start to get into the fascia, the connective tissue of the feet, it actually is really beneficial for the whole back line of the body. We can open up this one long sheet that connects. And then here we also start to warm up through the toes, through the ankles, through your knees. So really simple but effective pose to start with when we're working with love for the lower body. Especially if you're skiing and the feet have been in ski boots or hiking boots. Our activity shoes aren't always super comfortable. Okay, you got this, just a couple more breaths. And then slowly come forward, untuck your toes, take a little tap out of your feet on the tops of your feet. And now keep the tops of your feet down, sit your hips back again, you can keep the blanket behind your knees for this one, and then walk your hands back, lift your knees up, so now we start to get down the fronts of the shins, front of your ankles, tops of your feet. See if you can keep your chest lifted so it doesn't feel like you're hunching in. And then just take a few breaths. Right, a little different practice today. I've been finding more and more that some days I do want that really nice, continuous, flowy practice with breath. Right, other days I really need specific therapeutic practices for certain parts of my body. So just different tools for different days. Good. Bring your knees down. Come forward again. Tabletop. So now you can walk your knees back so they're under your hips. Stack your wrists under your shoulders. And give yourself a little space. Your knees don't have to be close together. So they're lined up right underneath your sitting bones. And then stretch your right foot out behind you, but keep your toes down to your mat. And then just rock back and forth a little bit. Toes and balls of your feet. And so again, toes, ankles, maybe calves. Sometimes we always think about the joints. 
when we're working through our yoga practice, we talk a lot about the muscles. And the joints are always getting affected, but it can be nice to hone in a little bit more specifically. Think about all muscles connect to joints. So our movement, we often think about our, our range of motion, the flexibility of the muscles is also really dependent on the mobility of our joints. Okay, switch sides, stretch your left foot back, toes down, and then just rock back and forth a few times. I often think about those things as flexibility versus mobility. And they're both really important for healthy range of motion overall. Okay, and then keep your left foot back. Really root down through your hands, lift through your belly, and then step your right foot back to meet your left high plank. Take a full breath in. And then exhale, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. And just set your foundation here. And so you're rooted through your hands. And then press your hands down and forward. Lift your hips up and back. Your knees might have a little bend in them or their legs might be straight. And we're going to take a nice slow pedal of the leg. So bend into your right knee. Stretch your left heel towards your mat. And then just take a moment to pause there. So often we do this a little bit more at a quicker pace. And so giving the tissue a little time to warm up on each side. Okay, switch sides, bend into your left, bring your right leg to or towards straight, and then really root your heel towards your mat. Keep anchoring your hands down and forward so there's a lot of support through your upper body. Let's do one more side each time, bend into your right, straighten through your left, and then switch. And just start to notice side to side how things feel. What is going on with the lower body today? And both heels towards your mat. And then from here, walk your hands back to your feet, come to the back of your mat. Take your feet out nice and wide. Turn your toes out just slightly. We can do a little less right than this big angle sometimes we take here. And then bend your knees, settle down to or towards squat. Right? If knees don't feel great here, can always come to chair pose with your forearms to your thighs. Great modification that still starts to warm up through the joints and the tissue. Okay, here you can always have a block underneath your hip, so lots of options. And for this variation, keep your hands down to your mat. Give a little squeeze of your inner legs towards your outer shoulders, and then let your hips and your heels start to settle down. For some of us here, the heel here the heels are lifted. And that's fine. You're welcome to slide your blanket up underneath there too. We are gonna take a little bit of movement from here. Okay, take a full breath in. And then with your exhale, lift your hips, turn your toes forward, fold in, forward fold. Again, you might have a little bend in your knees. Inhale, lengthen forward halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, turn your toes out slightly, come down to squat. Okay, so you'll move with breath, press into your heels, lift your hips, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, settle down to squat. And so it's just a little bit of movement with your toes in and out as we do this. Lift up, exhale, heels out, fold in. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Good, exhale, bend your knees, settle down to squat. Take a breath in. And then exhale, lift, toes forward, fold in. Let your head get heavy. Then take a couple more like that with your breath. Inhale, lengthen. And then turn your heels in slightly. Exhale, settle down to squat. Pause here for your breath in. And then exhale, lift hips, fold forward, point toes forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, heels in, knees bent, settle down to squat. All right, it's great to start to lubricate joints, hips, knees, and ankles. Take one more full breath here. And then this time as you lift your hips, walk your hands forward, down dog. And you may need to rearrange where your feet are, walk them back a little bit, 
or place them again so they're hips width distance apart. Okay, get strong through your hands. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, bend your knee, open your hips. So stack right hip on top of left or in that direction. And then make a couple big circles here with your ankles, with your feet. And then make a couple big circles with your knee and your hip. And go slowly enough you can feel what's happening. <laughs> And then as you inhale, come back, three-legged downward facing dog. Exhale, step your right foot all the way through. Bring your left knee down to your mat. And then for this variation on Anjana Asana, go ahead, keep your hands down. So this is also a really nice place if you want support of blocks or to come up onto fingertips. And then find that inner leg strength. So hug your legs to center. Find some tone through your belly. And then you can let your hips start to settle forward a little bit, but I'm gonna invite you not to go all the way to the end range of motion. Right? One of the other reasons we're gonna keep hands down here for a little bit more support. The most activities we do engage hip flexors here at the front. You can feel that out of the front of the left hip. And so while often the stretch feels really good here, sometimes we're prone to doing that without a lot of support. And what feels good in the moment can strain on the soft tissue in the joint over time. Like if we're not doing it with enough muscular strength and engagement or even just the support of our hands. So take a couple more breaths like this with legs hugging in and belly strong to support the pelvis and then also supports the stretch in the front of the hip. And then if you've got your blocks, Set them to the side and step back down dog. And then on the second side, so really root your hands. They're gonna be your support here while I work through those joint circles. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, bend your knee, open your hip. And then take a couple circles, foot and ankle. You might hear a little popping <laughs> and creaking lubricating the joints and a couple big circles knee and hip sometimes one range of motion if you go both ways feels different from the other and back to center three-legged down dog take a breath in and then exhale step all the way through Good. right knee down keep your hands down to your mat and come up on blocks and then really squeeze, squeeze like you could pull your front heel towards your back knee. Stay zipped up through your low belly. And then just feel what that support does for the front of the hip. Does it change of how it's responding to gravity? Sometimes I find when there's more support, it's like it signals our brain that it's okay to soften a little more. Right? Instead of just hanging out, pressing at that end range of motion, without support, sometimes the body wants to guard and protect that. When there's a little bit more support, it's really helpful to signal the nervous system that it's okay to let go. And a couple more breaths. And then again, if you have your blocks, set them to the side, step back, down dog. Okay, we're gonna do a little cross the body. So sometimes good right brain, left brain. And you'd step your right foot forward behind your left ankle. And so I'm coming to the other side of the mat and then step your left foot over to the right. So cross your legs somewhere, shins, thighs, wherever it works. And you can go pretty wide with your feet. You can go a little narrower. My left foot's a little further back than my right. That gives a little bit more space there too. And then wherever your legs are touching, squeeze them towards one another and press down through the big toe side of your feet, just so it doesn't feel like they're rolling into center. And then from there, walk your hands over to your right. That's another great place if you want to bring the floor a little closer 
grab blocks. And so outer left hip, IT band, that big tendinous band that runs down the side of your leg. Nice to get into there. And can you make a little adjustment here? If you tack your right, nope, your left hip back a little bit, that might change how it feels. And then walk yourself back to center. Press down into your feet. Inhale, stand all the way up. Exhale, hands together at your heart. Good. Reach up, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. I know, probably a little bit awkward. And then your front leg, your right leg, swing it all the way around. So now you're crossed the other way. A little squeeze again of your inner legs. Press down through your big toe mounds, that side of your foot. And then walk your hands over to your left. And you might notice the further you walk your hands at that diagonal, different sensation might happen. And if the right hip's just wanting to pull all the way forward with you, well, one, you can back out a little bit. That's helpful. And so tack your right hip back. And just notice where you feel it as we just work to focus on this whole area, the lower body, inner, outer, front, back. And come back to center, press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. Good, and then unwind your legs to so step your left foot forward, right foot forward to meet a Tadasana mountain pose. Take a breath, see how things feel already. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, hinge, fold forward. Lift halfway, take a breath in. Exhale, fold, step your right foot back. Turn and plant your back heel. Good, come on up, warrior two, but straighten your front leg. Inhale here. And then exhale, hinge forward, come down, triangle pose. It's also one of my favorite places for a block or a little more height for the bottom arm so the chest can stay open. And you can stay here or stretch your arm up overhead. One might just feel better today along the side body or the hip. But focus here on the stability of the lower body. And so as you squeeze your heels in towards one another, then root down into your feet. Sometimes that helps to roll your chest open. And start to notice where you feel sensation. Right? Sometimes it's the inner leg range of motion that stops us. Sometimes it's the back hip. <laughs> when people ask sometimes about poses and where should I feel it, we know that we're all different, so we're all going to feel it somewhere different. Okay, press down into your feet. Inhale, stand all the way up. Pivot your feet to the long end of your mat. Reach both arms up. And then come to the back. So turn your right toes back. Slide your left heel back. Open out wide. Take a breath in. And then exhale, hinge forward. Come down, triangle pose, second side. Might feel different range of motion side to side. Hug heels in. Press your feet down. And then you can think about rolling your right inner thigh up. It's one of those movements where it's not going to move a whole lot, but gets the engagement in a different way. And then roll your left, your back inner thigh back. So we start to take the pelvis and the hips in different directions. And press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Turn your toes again to the long end of your mat, reach both arms up, and then exhale, hinge, fold forward. Wide-legged forward fold. Take whatever arm variation feels good. You can walk your hands back. You can hold ankles. All right, you could take a shoulder opener if it feels like they'd like to have just a little bit of attention. But bring most of the focus to your lower body. Root down from your hips to your feet. And then pull up from your inner arches all the way up the inseam of your leg. 
Bring a little bit of the weight forward to the balls of your feet. And knees can be a little softer here if that helps to create space or if it helps you from locking out, right, from hyperextending the joint. And then just take a couple breaths, let your upper body get heavy. You can even shake head, yes, and no a little bit. With your next inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, bend into your right knee. So either side lunge right here, toes stay just as they are, right? Or bend your knee a little bit more, come down skandasana and reach your left toes up towards the ceiling. So here's a really good example. This requires a fair amount of range of motion in the ankle and the knees and the hips. So we're getting to the joints. So for some of us, this is a great therapeutic pose and for others, not so much, right? And if that's the case, that side lunge is a great place. You just meet your body where it's at. That's where the work's gonna happen. Okay, come through center, inhale, and then bend into your left. So here, side lunge, or come down. And sometimes that little popping and cracking of the joints, hands down or hands to heart. Right, so the joints, and we also get some work into the inseam of the leg, the adductors, which don't always get a ton of attention. Good. Release your hands, come through center, and then walk yourself to the front of your mat, step back, high plank. Knees up or knees down here. Take a breath in, and then lower all the way down to your belly. Okay, from here, you're going to roll onto your left side and prop your head up in your hand. You can stack your feet. So this one tends to get a little bit into balance too. You can add on just a little bit of fun in that way. And from here, with feet flexed, press down into the outer edge of your bottom foot, and then bend your top knee, reach back. Right, and if the balance is really wonky, you can let your top foot or your bottom foot come forward or back a little bit more. And then draw your inner thighs towards one another. Even just that might change the stretch in the front of the quad and the hip flexor. And when the knee splays out to the side, it tends to cheat that a little bit. <laughs> okay, find some lift through your belly to support. And then just press your foot and your hand into one another. Feel, feel that resistance. And you can stay just like that or start to move the thigh, the knee back a little bit and that might increase sensation. Yeah, so you just find your stopping point. Take a couple breaths there. Sometimes there's different, like this shape we do in so many different ways. Sometimes there's different access to it. It feels easier or harder, different orientations. Okay, release. Come to your belly. And then roll to the second side. So roll to your right, unless you did that one first, then just switch sides. <laughs> Prop your head up in your hand. Flex your feet. And so just getting that support of the legs to turn on and then bend your top leg, reach back. And I should have said this first side, if hand and foot don't connect, you can reach in that direction and you'll probably still feel some work through the front of the thigh. Maybe you take a hold of your foot. Okay. Bring your legs towards one another, tone through your belly, and then press your foot and hand into one another. Stay with your knees in line or start to send your top leg back a little bit. Take a couple breaths. I do find the more you press down into the outer edge of your straight leg, the more stability you can find here. Okay, release. Come all the way to your belly. Bend your knees and let your feet just move side to side a little like windshield wiper. And then let your legs come down. Bring your hands by your sides, press to tabletop. Okay. We're gonna do one that was similar to where we started with a little different action through the feet. So from tabletop, bring your knees together, but take your feet out a little wider. I really like to have a block. 
in between my heels for this one. For some of us, maybe even two blocks. And like we did before, for some of us, maybe a blanket tucked behind your knees. All right, so lots of ways to support the joints in this pose. Okay, and then from here, you'll sit back, hips to your block or a couple blocks or pillows. And if you're like, mm, mm -mm, this one does not work for knees at all, because I do think that's really the case for some of us, a cross-legged seat will be lovely as well. One nice adjustment that is good to make here is you can back out a little, take your hands behind your knees, and then just feel like you could squeeze the flesh of your calf back and down along your leg. And sometimes just that gives the knees a little bit more space. Okay, so here you're on the tops of your feet, heels hugging in towards your outer hip, and just bring your hands wherever they're comfortable. And get active through the tops of your feet, so press down. Allow the bowl of your pelvis to tilt slightly forward so it feels like you do have a little bit of curve in your low back. It's not a big back bend. It's just finding that place where it feels like you have your natural curve. And then with your hands, roll your thighs in. And so we're getting the rotation of the hips in that inner direction. Again, ankles, knees, hips, maybe some thighs. Really targeting both joints and soft tissue for the whole lower body. Give it just a couple more breaths. This is one of those that can be really therapeutic for the knees, unless it's not, right? To find the edge where there's sensation, but no pain. And then slide forward, come off your block. Root through your hands, stretch up and back, down dog. It may even feel good here to take one good slow pedal of the legs and open up through your knees after that. And, and then come back, both feet, hip width apart, root through your hands, take a breath. And if they're not already, have your blocks up by the front of the mat, just somewhere where you can reach them easily from there. Then reach your right leg up and back, take a breath in. And then exhale, bring your right knee behind your right wrist, pigeon pose, right? And figure four on your back, always a great variation if this is not feeling accessible. Again, this challenges hips, knees, ankles, all of that. Right? And if you have blocks, you can take a block underneath your left hand and your right hand to your thigh. And if that feels like, Ooh, that's a lot of back bend today. <laughs> Keep your hands forward, but just pause before you fold forward. Okay, line up your left leg, so hip, knee, and ankle in line, and then tuck your left toes under if they're not yet. Press down strongly into the outer right shin and squeeze your inner legs together. Okay, take a breath here. Right, probably some good sensation, a little bit more through the front of the left hip. This upright variation can give you a little bit more hip opening on the front than when we fold forward. And then an option, you can stay right here, feel like, yep, that's good, plenty. If you want to turn it up just a notch, press into your, the toes ball of your left foot and lift your left knee up off the mat. Ooh, stay strong through your belly to support your back. Take another breath. And then lower down. Start to walk all the way forward. You can keep your toes tucked under or press the top of your foot down, whatever feels better for you. Just keep the strength in your legs as you fold forward so that there's a lot of support. And then just give yourself a few breaths here. Walk your hands back, unwind your legs, stretch back down dog. And second side, left leg up, left knee behind left wrist, pigeon pose, second side. 
Okay, and then do the same. Straighten out through your right leg. Tuck your toes under. And if this feels like a good amount of backbone with your hands forward, stay there. Or you can do a block underneath your right hand, left hand to your thigh. That's a nice way to give a little support. Squeeze legs together. Press down through your outer left shin. And then either you're going to stay right here because it feels like mm -hmm, there's already sensation in the front of the right hip. Or with your toes tucked under, press in the toes, lift your thigh up. That might <laughs> change the sensation a little bit. Take a breath. And then lower it back down and walk forward. You can bring that block underneath your forehead. You can come to forearms. You can make a pillow with your hands to see what feels good on this side. And take a few breaths. And keep the legs strong. Just notice if that shifts how it feels like the body's supported. Sometimes just that little bit more support, like we are saying, can help the body soften into the pose. And then unwind, walk back, stretch back down dog. And take a full round of breath. And then bring your knees down to your mat. Sit back on your heels, come all the way down. Okay, a couple options here. We're gonna set up for a supported butterfly and then legs up the wall. So if you have blocks, it can be nice for support under your thighs. Um, pillows work really well there too. And so with soles of your feet together, come to lie all the way down on your back and slide your support underneath your legs. And if it feels like it's really comfortable for you to lay without the support, great, you can do that. But if it feels like there's a fair amount of sensation there, you may want a little extra support. And then just bring your hands wherever they're comfortable, belly or out to the sides. Take a couple breaths. And just allowing now the work of your legs to soften. Got a little blood flow going. Moving through the joints. Through the connective tissue, through the muscle tissue. Right. This can be a great full practice on its own, just to focus on the lower body. Things are feeling like they need a little attention. Or a great after movement practice. Especially if you've had a big activity, a longer hike, a big day skiing. And keep the blood flow moving so that the tissues don't start to tighten up. Sometimes even the day after <laughs> when things are feeling sore to keep things moving. All right, use your hands on your outer thighs, help your legs back together. And then we're going to set up for a supported legs at the wall. If you are by a wall and it's really easy to get there and do that, awesome. If not, slide your block or a pillow or two underneath your hips. And just make sure the support's really there under your glutes, under your bum, and then bring your knees in, stretch your legs up, right? This is going to be our alternate to Shavasana today. So if this is not feeling lovely for any reason today, then I just recommend taking Shavasana, right? Legs down, regular style. <laughs> and just find the place here, if your legs are kind of hanging out in space, where it feels like they can just soften, not a lot of effort. Close your eyes. And the idea being here that we just start to bring blood flow, lymphatic fluid, away from the legs back to the torso, like draining the legs from activity. 
So we take these last few moments of rest here. Let's let yourself stay really present with breath and with sensation. You're ready to come out, draw your knees towards your chest, place your feet, slide your block out. And as you bring your hips down, roll all the way onto your side. Press yourself back up to sitting. And when you get there, bring your hands together at your heart. Thanks so much for taking your time today to share this practice, to focus on the lower body and some of the therapeutics there. I hope the practice was beneficial. Namaste.